Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to continue my coverage of the 2024 Atlas Mountain Race and I'm going to take a look at some of the bikes that we used during the event from different competitors, see what's out there and then at the end of the video I'm just going to do a comparison between the two bikes I've used in the 2022 edition and then again in this past edition in 2024. But before I get any further uh, I just need to say a big thank you to Redshift. They've been sponsoring my coverage of the Atlas Mountain Race. They do a load of really cool products such as the shock, the, the shock stock seat post which I use in um, in the race um, and also they do the suspension stems as well so these are really good for like a, a gravel bike or a rigid bike uh, if you just want to take a bit of cushioning um, or give yourself a bit more cushioning I actually used it myself uh, this was in a tour in Morocco my mason in search of and you can see I've got the shock stock uh, shop stop stem in there um, and it just takes the edge off um, you know on bumpy roads and tracks and, and things like that um, so yeah big shout out to to red red uh, redshift um i've got a 15 percent discount code in the in the comment section below um so check that out and uh check those guys out because they've been a great support to me um and yeah thanks very much so let's get on to some of the bikes um that were used so i'm going to start this is the the fastest bike of them all this is justina slavica's bike and um so he's been riding trek for a while um, and this year he made the the shift to the super caliber um, now this is their cross-country race bike and as you can see it is it's kind of full suspension but it's not um it's not like a full-on full suspension bike you get 80 mil travel and this is designed for like the world cup races so super light um, and it works really well for this kind of event um, well obviously as demonstrated by Eustinus um so the nice thing about it is because of the way the shock is mounted under the top tube here you still retain that that whole um, you know, triangle for the bag. He's obviously on the, the tail fin R&D division, um, as I am, and he's he's basically managed to get a custom bag to fit in there. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. Uh, Justina tends to favor a um, like a, a bladder and a backpack for water. Um, so he just carries his, his stuff in the frame there. Um, and you can see he's got one of the tail fin um, sort of little cargo bags on the back there, just bolted on the back of the seat post. Really not, nice, neat little solution. Saves him carrying the full um, aero rack. Um, and tires, he's gone for the classic, uh, the Mike Hall classic. Mike used to run these tires on Tour Divide. Continental Race Kings, uh, they get a really good rack. You know, they, they roll really fast. Um, the black chili compound is pretty damn good. Um, and yeah, obviously it worked very well for him. He's still running the Axis. He's on this brand new fancy stuff, the direct mount stuff. Um, Justinus always seems to have problems with batteries. This time he forgot his spare batteries. Um, so he only took one battery, but he got through the whole race on it. So fair play to him and he won it. So we can't really argue with that. Uh, wheels, he's on the, you may have seen on a few bikes, um, including Cynthia Carson's, the, the new, the Hunt Carbon um, Dynamo wheel set. So these are the proven Carbon Beyond wheel set. That's that's the name of them. Um, Justine is still running pre-production, but he he ran these at Tour Divide last year and also the Silk Road Mountain Race. Sophie and Sahili's won like three Silk Road Mountain races on this production wheel set. I've been running it since, well, various iterations since 2019. Finally made production, um, so keep an eye out um, and check out Cynthia's bike. Uh, and Marion de saint Experience. he's also running a set um, for the production version, so that's really cool to see that. Uh, and yeah, yet another win for it. So um, good to see that the uh, it's paying off and um, all the stuff's out there. Uh, so next up, Rich and Shona, they're running this really cool uh, salsa tandem. Um, they're, they're they're an adventurous pair. They've done loads of these uh, events. Um, they I think they're actually instrumental in um, helping Nelson create the Atlas Mountain Race in the early days. Um, so it's good to see them back at the race. I was chatting to them before the event. Um, so they've actually, you may notice there's these kind of, obviously the, the bike's in two halves. Um, the, the green half and the yellow half and they've actually got these SNS couplings um, put in the middle here so this isn't standard on the on the on the salsa tandem frame um, but they were telling me uh, so one of the classic British frame builders Bob Jackson um, I think he's I think he was out of Leeds or somewhere um, in like up north anyway um, this was so he he'd do, he would do frame mod modifications as well as creating his own bespoke uh, frames um, and they were telling me this was one of the very, very last frames he worked on before he retired and, and sort of ended his business. Um, so yeah, kind of a little bit of history there. And the great thing about these couplings is, is, I mean, if you've got a tandem, then you basically end up paying for two bikes every time you take it anywhere because you have to break it apart into two bags. But with the uh, the couplings, you just put the, the bike in half. You can get um, brake cables like splitters as well. Um, 
and yeah off you go so it's easy to travel if you if you want to take a tandem um got a it looks like a cane creek is it thudbuster seat post on the rear the one problem with tans is because they're so long obviously you can't like absorb the bumps with your arms and legs as well when there's two of you so it can be quite harsh on the back so you need to run some kind of suspension seat post um i can't see i can't quite make it make out what wheels they are but you need to build them real strong obviously there's there's twice the amount of weight on there um uh, maxis icon tires um and then just like a bit of a mishmash of bags um the great thing about a tandem is you do have loads of room for frame bags and for bottles so that's never a worry so a bit of a mix of apidura that's a, a salsa bag i think that's that's kind of um that's made specifically um or they, they supplied them specifically for salsa frames um and then they're running the ergon grips on there um and then a tail fin aero pack on the back there um really convenient for putting stuff in there so yeah real nice real nice build um they didn't i don't think they actually finished in the end i think they had a bit of a crash which is unfortunate um but yeah cool to see uh, see the tandem out there um next up um so this is matea de Marquis lee coogan so matea he's uh, he's part of enough cycling uh, you may see them out out there they 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 got they've got pretty cool branded kit um and they ride predominantly they ride basso bikes so Basso provide them road and gravel bikes, um, but Lee, Lee Coogan is a mountain bike brand that's part of the same kind of um, family of ownership. Um, so they run Lee Coogan for the more mountain bike events uh, and then Basso for like gravel and, and road and that kind of thing. Um, so Lee Coogan, is, you might not know much about it, um, but it's, uh, it was an American brand and it's quite, um, I think it's quite well known. And then as, as happens in the bike industry and in any industry, the, um, I think it kind of wound up, the name got sold off and it's ended up under the parent company of Basso. Um, so they're making a comeback. Um, and this is their, uh, it's the Rampage, um, it's a soft tail. So it's got 30 minute of travel. You can see there's, there's not really a shock in there. It's more of an elastomer. Now there's a few bikes out there. Um, I mean, the, the, the Trek, um, I can't remember, I, th I think it's a Calibre, um, not the one Eustinus was riding, the one he rode previously. It's just got like an elastomer kind of suspension in the, around the seat post area. BMC have a similar similar type thing. Um, and essentially there's no pivot in the bottom. It just relies on the, the shape of the carbon stays here. You can see they're, they're slightly kind of curved. Um, and it kind of makes sense. Um, you know, it's, you, you get the whole triangle, you don't lose any, any space in there. Um, and then you can kind of, uh, you know, get some benefit of um, a suspension frame, but without like the extra weight and, you know, the, the, the pivots and the faff around that. Um, so they're running, they're running ful fulcrum wheels, Pirelli tires, and not quite, oh, they're Scorpions. I don't know much about Pirelli tires, to be honest. So I'd be interested to hear in the comments, you know, if there's anything, any intel you can give me about them. Um, and Miss Grape, I used to ride Miss Grape stuff. Um, so big shout out to Michele who, who runs Miss Grape. Um, really nice stuff made in Italy. Um, and yeah, so they, they sponsor it enough. Um, and yeah, running the new XX direct mount stuff. Um, very nice, very expensive. Um, looks pretty cool, um, but I wouldn't buy it myself because uh, I couldn't afford it. Um, so I'd have to rely on blagging it, which uh, isn't going to happen. Um, so yeah, that's Matea's bike. Unfortunately, he did scratch at CP2, but he was right up there. Um, but yeah, it's a interesting build. Next up, I mean, I added this in mainly because it's a Mason. Um, as if you've if you've been watching and following me for a while, you know I ride Mason. Um, and this is the in search of actually the bike I showed you at the front with the redshift stem. So this is uh, Martin. He's he's he, he got this uh, in search of for the Tour Divide last year, which he completed. Um, I think he did the Grand Guanche on it as well. So Tour Divide, he had a rigid fork. And then he's added in this RockShox SID 100mm. Basically, the geometry is 100mm corrected. Um, so yeah, it makes sense to, to run a fork for Atlas Mountain Race if you can. Just because it is very rough. Um, you can do it on a rigid fork. Um, you can do it, no, no problem. Um, but with a suspension fork, it would make life so much better. Um, and just, you know, stop your hands getting sore. It just stops fatigue. You'll be able to ride the downhills quicker. Um, so yeah, so he's he's upgraded with the fork for that. Uh, running Renner's Fleece Ridge tires. Obviously, I've been running those for a few years. Um, the past few years, the great tires, roll nice and fast, nice and light, nice and supple. Um, wheels, I can't quite make out what the wheels are. They've got these blacked out graphics. Are they Reynolds? Or not quite sure. Anyway, uh, it looks like he's running an SB or a Dynamo front hub on there. Um, he's got a mix. He's got an XT chain set, but he's running Axis uh, shifting. Um, and then he's gone for the full frame pack. Looks like he's got his water bladder in there. Personally, I'm not a fan of bladders in the frame pack. 
Um, I don't like how they slosh around a bit and you can never quite see what's in them. Um, and I don't really like drinking out of a straw. Um, but they probably are a neater solution. Um, so yeah, he's got a uh, Revelate frame bag. Like Revelate were one of the original guys doing these um, bike packing bags. I brought a load when I first got into it 10 years ago. Um, really, real nice stuff. Apertura full length top tube bag. Um, and then another little Revelate um, little, little pack there. Quite neat, just put your rain jacket in or something. And then it looks like the bulk of his sleeping stuff. Uh, it's just on a dry bag. Um, I can't quite make out whether it's like a frame or a specific dry bag on the front there. Um, it might be a Revelate one, judging by the sort of the, the red straps on there. Um, so yeah, nice little neat um, setup. I think he finished in top 30 odd. Um, so yeah, had a nice chat with him in the race. So yeah, um, nice nice bike. Um, now this one, I, I probably um, it's probably one of my favourite bikes in the the lineup to be honest. Uh, so this is Quinda, Quinda Verhul, and she's riding this prototype Sauer full suspension bike. Um, I think it's 100 mil. Um, and yeah, still still triangle. I think, think it's, is it a carbon, like swing arm or is it an alloy one? Can't quite make it out. But yeah, it's, this, this is such a cool bike. Um, it just looks cool. It's kind of like that artisan, um, you know, handmade steel frame, but with a, you know, the full sus kind of like slightly modern looking rear end. Um, looks looks wicked uh running the fox looks like it's a 34 suspension so i imagine 100 uh, 120 mil front suspension got the nice fox uh dropper seat post um with a nice gold kashima always looks really great um and actually interestingly if you were looking at my um my silk road mountain race coverage i was mentioning um potentially running one of these bottles underneath the cage here now she's just using the um the tail fin uh, little cargo cage um, with the big, um, you know, water canister. It looks like a litre and a half. Um, so, yeah, I think basically that's what I need to be doing for something like Silk Road or if I need extra volume. Um, so, yeah, it's always good to copy other people. <laughs> so, cheers, Quinda. Um, and Quinda is also, as you may have figured out by the bags on the tail fin R&D division. So, she's got the nice tail fin front pack. Again, I used that on Highland Trail and Silk Road last year. Got really good mesh pockets on the front. Um, and then a nice little custom front wedge here. Allows a bit of space for the um, suspension in there and just carry some essentials. Um, as I said before, full suspension, super good. Um, to be honest, it's probably the fastest option for these these kind of rough events. Yes, it's slightly heavier, but you just save so much uh, in terms of energy by being comfortable. However, there is a downside. You you just lose space in the triangle. Um, so it does make things a little bit more tricky. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a compromise you need to figure out. Um, and Quinn is also, this is the same same pack as I used. Um, it's a new prototype from Tailfin. And you may notice that the Tailfin does work on a full suspension because there's a pivot at the clamp here, a pivot at the top of the carbon arch and pivot on the axle. It will actually it will actually track with the suspension. So you can run a you can run a tail fin with a suspension, a full suspension bike, no problem whatsoever. Um, so yeah, really cool bike. Um, I shouldn't say this being a Mason rider, but it's probably my favorite one in this list. So, so yeah, good to see it. Um, another full suspension. I mean, there's a theme. People are clocking on to the fact that full suspension is probably the the best job for the um, for this kind of thing, um, providing you can uh, carry all your luggage okay. Um, so um, this is Alex's bike now. Uh, I rode with Alex a bit in the Japanese Odyssey. Um, you know, known fairly well. Um, we actually traded traded places in the race a little bit rode together a little bit on day two um and eventually he kind of got away from me um but yeah this is this is a real nice bike again he's on the tail fin thing i promise this isn't supposed to be a tail fin advert but i just happen to have picked loads of bikes that um with with riders who who ride the tail fin r&d stuff um so again similar to quinda um he's got the a custom frame pack to to fit inside there um it's not, uh, it's probably, I don't know whether this is neater or not. It's pro probably a bit more efficient having the shock at the top here. Um, it means you get that lower section down here so you can get a bit more space. But you'll notice a theme like Justinus, um, Quinda to a certain extent, Alex, they've all gone for the frame pack and then the long top tube pack here. Um, that just gives you um, a bit more extra storage on top. Um, again, he's running one of these these um, tail fin prototypes that I was running, same as Quinda. Um, and again, you know, just works on the the full suspension, um, you know, with the pivots and stuff in the in the frame. Um, one thing um, I like about this it's the the fork inverted fork uh, samurai. It's, it's the model is a samurai. I can't quite remember the brand, but um, 100 mil fork. Um, and basically, Alex was telling me he went for this because because of um, the fact 
he's running full suspension and he loses that you know the bottle cages in the frame he's used the the tail fin uh, fork clamps so you can you mount you can mount bottles on the fork um, but on a on a on a suspension fork a standard one you kind of um, you like you get the weight on the bottom and it just it just affects the suspension but because it's inverted basically uh, the, the suspension is kind of loaded normally so you can just run a little bit more pressure in there and then the suspension should perform really, really well I mean they look, they look really neat um, very expensive made in Germany um, but yeah I would consider putting one of those on my bike um, but yeah just have to afford it <laughs> uh, it looks like he's running Roval wheels being on a specialized rider um, no dynamo I think Alex relies on battery packs um, and you can see just the SQ Labs inner bar ends here. Quite a few riders are riding those. I think Justine has had them as well. Just gives you an internal hand position um, inside the levers. And then the aero bars, um, which just obviously help you. There's a lot of flats on the, uh, the well, not flats, but drags on the Atlas Mount, Mountain Race route. Um, so it's good to be able to just get down in an aero position and, and make yourself go a little bit faster. On to the next bike and another full suspension. I just seem to be picking them out at the moment. Um, uh, more tail fin stuff. Um, <laughs> again, I promise it's not a tail fin advert. Um, but this is Adam Palin's bike now. Um, Adam, well, he, he got it was a couple of places ahead of me. We crossed paths quite a few times in the race. He's running this. Uh, it was a Santa Cruz Blur. I'm a bit of a Santa Cruz fan, to be honest. I used to ride for them way back when I was doing 24 hour races. Um, so I do like them. I've actually got one of the high tails at home, a trail bike. Um, don't tell Mason that, but um, I do do love to ride it. I think they're, they're certainly the lower linkage uh, full suspension bikes, the tall boy upwards, they ride incredibly well. Um, but this is the blur. This is kind of their XC race bike, uh, 100 mil rear travel, 120 front, um, 110 front maybe. They do two versions basically with different linkages so that you can get like the trail version, which is 115, 120. Uh, and then the basic one, I think it's 100 and 100 mil. But either way, um, same thing. Full suspension, heavier, but probably is faster. Um, but it's a bit more of a faff with the bags and stuff. Um, now he's got the an R and D tail fin R and D um, pack on here. It's not actually his. He, uh, I think he um, borrowed this from from Neil Copeland, who who is also supported by tail fin. But he's running the the, the flippy top top G pack. Um, and the rear pack again works fine with full suspension um, so it's quite a good option to get a lot of volume um, on, on a full sus bike and get the benefits of running that suspension setup uh, tires again he's on the continental race kings um, the Mike Cool classic um, gone for a bottle on the down tube I think he was running a pack as well from memory uh, little aero bars and you see the little SQ lab um, in a bar ends in there um, running the DT Swiss fork um, I'm not they, they always used to be real lightweight DT Swiss forks but they weren't necessarily super reliable um, not sure how they perform nowadays so I'd be interested to to know if you kind of um, like if you've experienced that um, just drop us a comment um, so yeah uh, DT Swiss rims um, no dynamo by the looks of it so relying on battery packs um, I think he stopped in quite a few hotels so that gave him the option to to um, charge stuff um, but yeah he did a good ride really solid ride I think he's He's made a lot of improvements as a rider. Uh, this is Adam, not the bike. <laughs> uh, he's made a lot of improvements as a rider over the last year or so. So he's certainly one to, to keep an eye on on these, these events. Um, now let's let's head on to, to my bikes. Um, so did the event for the first time in 2022, which was the second edition of the race. That was in October after a series of, um, of cancellations due to the pandemic. And this is my Meso in search of. Um, very similar setup to the bike Martin was using um, as we looked at earlier um, as you can see uh, steel frame drop bar um, and I ran the SID fork SID ultimate fork actually this is exactly the same fork that I used uh, for this race you'll see in a second wheels again the hunt um, well they're now the, the proven beyond dynamo wheel set um, so this was a sample um, again exactly the same wheel set that I just used um, Running the Redshift seat post, um, you know about those guys sponsoring the video. Um, I find them really, really comfortable. Um, it just, like we've been talking about full suspension quite a lot. Um, one way to get around if you don't want to run a full suspension bike um, and, and have the benefits, but still have some of the benefits, is to run a suspension seat post. You get about 25 mil, 30 mil. Um, so similar to that Lee Coogan bike that we saw Matea running, um, this is a, a way just to convert the bike you have and have some suspension. So yeah, and the shock post works 
pretty well for me. Um, bags, again, I'm, I'm on the tail fin R&D thing. All I've shown you is tail fin um, in this video, but I, as I said, it's kind of coincidence more than anything. Um, so yeah, I had some custom stuff. I'm always trying stuff out. I'm, I'm kind of one of those riders that basically annoys the product guys um, and asks for weird stuff that's probably never gonna make production, but um, hopefully it's useful. Um, so I had, this is a, a previous version of that pack that you saw Quinda running and myself running and Alex running. Um, it's been refined since then. Um, so I had my sleeping gear stuffed in the in the back. I had my my sort of general clothing in the frame bag, top tube bag for you know odds and sods. And then I had two bottles. These were like seven seven hundred and fifty ml bottles, I think. And that's the biggest I could fit in in the frame there. And then I had a hydration pack, uh, running Di two, um, and I had the, um, the Fleece Ridge tires from from Renners, um, and it will work great. Um, but I I'm never settled with bikes. I change them all the time. Um, so this year, this is this is kind of like informed by various races and, and events. So this this was the bike I use this year. It's still a prototype, an aluminium frame from Mason. Um, you might have seen the the bike check that um, that I put out the other day with a few more details. So 100 mil travel at the front. It's exactly the same fork as on was on the previous bike. Wheels are exactly the fr exactly the same ones. Um, still but bearing some scratches from 2022 Atlas Mountain Race um, amongst other events like the Silk Road. Uh, tires, um, I actually, I don't have a, a set sponsor this year for tires. Um, so I basically, I thought I'd try out the Vittorio Mezcals. Everyone seems to ride them. So I thought, why not give it a go? They've got, uh, the, the, the Fleece Ridges are great. They roll real fast, but sometimes I felt they just missed a bit of a, a side knob. So I gave these a go. Um, and yeah, they roll fast. Um, it's slightly wider at 2.3. Um, as opposed to 2.1, I think it was for the Fleecer Ridges. Um, so a little bit more comfort um, and volume on the rough descents. And yeah, they, they worked really well. Um, as you can see, I've not got DI2 two on this bike. Um, on the mountain bike, I just tend to stick to Shimano XT cable. Nice and easy, easy to sort out, easy to mend, carry a spare cable, nothing to, nothing to charge. Um, the rear pack, again, I've not, you might have noticed it's been on a few bikes, so this is something that Tailfin are working on. The the seat post, it's the same one I used in 2022. I've got a different saddle though. I've started using Ergon saddles, which work really well for me. Top tube pack is actually exactly the same as 2022. And then I just ended up using the, um, the the sort of frame wedge pack. This is actually built for my, or made for my Raw, which is the bike I used for uh, the Silk Road mountain race. Um, but I managed to squeeze it into this. It could be, do, could be like, 10 mil smaller um so it was a bit of a squeeze this rear bottle was squeezed a bit but it's a prototype bike it came quite late in the day so i didn't have time to get a custom pack made um another big difference is uh whereas in 2022 i used i think I had a 1.5 liter um like camelback pack uh, and then two 700 mil bottles this time i went for three one liter bottles um, i did actually have a one liter during the race on this on this top mount this was just zip tied on um, and i found that worked better i prefer not having a pack if i can help it just easier to get layers on and off um, and i don't like drinking out of a straw and i like to see how much water i've got um, so yeah this works pretty well um, yeah no real problems didn't run out of water three liters seemed to be about right for my pace um, so yeah all really good um, so yeah that is that is the uh, the bikes of the um, Atlas Mountain Race. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Big shout out to Redshift for, for sponsoring my series. Um, I've got a few more videos coming up, including my race video, um, which will be out hopefully next weekend. Um, so yeah, uh, any questions or anything, put them in the in the comments. I'm gonna do a q and I've got loads of questions on all my videos, so I thought I'd just do a separate video just to answer all those little questions. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next one.